Good morning, First Church. So today there's been a scripture upon my heart and I want to share it with you as we prepare to enter into worship. One day, Jesus was speaking to the disciples and he said to them, I no longer call you servants. I'll say it again. I no longer call you servants. I now call you friends because I confide in you. Remember, oh, ooh, remember that Jesus confides in us this day. This day, this first communion is for us to come into the spirit of the Lord in relationship. Amen, church? Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we come together with you on this holy day of communion, and we are thankful. We are thankful that we get to remember your sacrifice, but most importantly, your resurrection. In your resurrection, you remind us that you have victory over death, hell, and the grave, and there is nothing on this planet or in this universe or even outside of the universe that can come against us because you are always with us. And one day, you will return in the flesh and call us to you in a beautiful, beautiful moment of glory and song and cheer. And we look forward to that day. But until that day, we will continue to remember the sacrament of your flesh and your blood. Lord, we ask that you center your heart on us, and we ask that you also center our hearts on you as we prepare to take this glorious communion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. 
teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy standing and join me for the statement of faith. Could we get the statement of faith on the screen? Amen. 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 We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God. And to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, great persons in your own image, and set forth each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant, faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. You may be seated. you feel the spirit in this place of worship? Yes. Good, morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I don't know about you, I had a great holiday. 
I'm feeling good. I see all of you. I'm grateful for all of those who have showed up because God is going to show out. How about that? Yes. How about that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> don't let nobody tell you that the UCC don't know how to get down. What's up? Yes. So I do all of this not for performance purposes, but for, to let people know that everything doesn't have to be so uptight. Mm -hmm. God has a sense of humor. He called me. Yes, he did. <laughs> But without further ado, let me do what I've been charged to do. We first want to acknowledge the visitors here. And in particular, I'm glad to see some young people and young people that belong to some good people. And so if y'all would stand, all visitors, please. Someone will come around with the microphone, introduce yourselves, say a little bit, not a lot of bit, but just enough. And don't be shy, because you're important anyway. My name's Grace. Grace. Rogers. Hello, my name is Joy Rogers. Joy. Faith Rogers. Hoo-hoo, we got Grace Hello, Joy. my name is Isaiah Rogers. Hello, my name is Joel Elijah Oliver IV Rogers. <laughs> so we got the disciples and everybody in the building today. We got Grace, Joy, and Faith. I love it, yes. The prophets all right now? Yes, ma'am. Good ma morning. Good morning. My name is Jasmine. I am visiting for a second week. Um, I was invited by Miles, and I'm just glad to be here with you all today. All right. We appreciate the evangelism. Thank you, Miles, and thank you for coming back. Anybody else? Going once, going twice? You can answer because God is calling. Amen? Amen? Okay. Well, let me go ahead and do this. As Pastor would always say, we want to acknowledge those persons who are celebrating their anniversary that are um, still saying I do and still saying yes to it. Yes. If you would please stand and be recognized. I know y'all. Come on now. Yes. It's a lot of y'all. Yes. Amen. There is still hope for me. There is still hope for me. Yes. Wait a minute. No. I want to hear some years because y'all look like I can be doing, I need to, you know, yes, it's important. <laughs> That's how you survive, y'all, pay attention. That's it. Uh, so, uh, James and Sharon Rogers, um, make sure I get it right, 56 years. All right, yes. Yes, yes. Paul and Glenda Rowe, on the 28th, we'll celebrate our 51st anniversary. All right. Mm. Yes. Mike and the missing Danita Harris, uh, we're celebrating 14 years. Okay, amen. Lisa and Douglas Alston, 37 years. Right. Yay. <laughs> James and Shirley Lacey, 46 years. Amen. 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 Good morning. Daryl and Joy Fitzgerald, 47 years. All right. Amen. 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 Scripture says that two are better than one. When one shall fall, the other one will lift them up. And amen and more continued blessings over and over again. Amen. For real. Like, that's really good. Because you need each other. So those times that you, the tension, stay in it, okay? Stay in it. All right, yes. I know I'm silly, but that's okay. I get to do what I want to do. No, but now we want to celebrate the people who are celebrating their birthdays, who woke up this morning to celebrate. It's party time. If you would please stand and acknowledge your birthday. Amen. 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 Happy birthday, Trey. <laughs> okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Now, wasn't that fun? Yes. Okay, so we have some announcements. 
Let me first, so we have the flowers that are here today in recognition of the 56th wedding anniversary of Sharon and Dr. James Rogers and the 46th wedding anniversary of James and Shirley Lacey. Um, what I do not want to forget to make sure we announce is the Men's Fellowship, the Old Taste and See. It is a wonderful occasion. It is not just for the membership. This is an opportunity that we can invite other people to get their grub on. They are really creative, and you know, how many times does, do men really cook yeah. or prepare? I mean, I'm not being funny. You know, they say denial is a sin, so I'm just being for real. But I just really think that you should take, you know, go ahead, purchase the tickets. If you can't come, give them to somebody else. They'll appreciate it. Because yesterday we were at an estate sale on behalf of one of our members, and we realized that we missed real good fellowship. And it's important to be able to reminisce about the good times, but also create some too, right? And so I'm just opening that invitation to say, come on in and have a good time. And who cares what, you know, come on in, all right? Come on in and have a good time. That's that city country coming out, all right? Um, then we have Discovery Week. Discover God. I mean, I don't have to say anything else except discover God. Because such a time as this, in the times that we're in, we're always trying to re understand and figure out our purpose. Yeah. And the only way to do that is to spend some time with God, but in fellowship with others. And it's really a good time. It's not for anybody in particular, it's for everybody. And so come out, bring your grandchildren that may attend another church, a niece or somebody, it doesn't matter. Just come one day. If you don't come but one day, that's one day more that you spent with God. Amen. Amen. Let me see if there's anything else. Not that it would not be. But you know the nursery is open. I need to say that again. The nursery is open. And that's important too. Because if we want to grow a church, we got to make space for those young people so that they can grow up in the church. Amen. And so my daughter Janine is down there. She's a junior at Georgia State University. So you know I've already prayed over her and everything. So your children will be in good hands. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I'm going to stop playing so much. <laughs> but I just, you know, I might talk a lot, but I'm just going to take this time to say, y'all, I love all of you, and there's nothing that you could do about it. Right. And I appreciate everyone, everything that you do during the week. Seen, unseen, if I haven't told you, if somebody hadn't affirmed you and all of that stuff, God does. Yes. And we're going to enjoy the rest of this service. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's do it, y'all. Amen. 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 If you come on up. Huh? <laughs> Amen. Good morning, First Church. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I love that. Amen. You know, we're giving God the intro today, though. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, we have now reached the time in our worship where we, in the recognition as it is worship, to give. Um, to sow into what is God's house. Um, so at this time, uh, our trustees will come forth to collect tithes and offerings from you. And we ask that, you know, as you sow and as you lead with your heart, that you will sow into this ministry and God's plans for this ministry. Amen? Amen. 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 Right. up in all the earth is who you are higher lifted up in all the earth is who you are higher lifted up in all the earth is who you are lord we exalt your name lord we exalt your name higher lifted up in all the earth is who you are I lifted up in all the earth is who you are. I lifted up in all the earth is who you are. Lord, we exalt your name. Lord, we exalt your name. I lifted up in all the earth is who you are. I lifted up. 
helping all the earth is who you are. High and lifted up in all the earth is who you are. Lord, we exalt your name. Lord, we exalt your name. High and lifted up in all the earth is who you are. High and lifted up in all the earth is who you are. High and lifted up in all the earth is who you are. Lord, we exalt your name. Lord, we exalt your name. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, high and lifted up. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, high and lifted up. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, high and lifted up. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord. We praise you, oh Lord, high and lifted up. We praise you, 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 high and lifted up, oh Lord, we praise you, oh Lord, we praise you, oh Lord, we praise you, oh Lord, high and lifted up. Amen. Yes, yes. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house, and thus put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing blessing. Lord, we lift you up. Yes. You are high above the earth. Yes. Lord, we lift you up with the seeds that you have given to us, O God planting them in your sacred soil, O God, to bring forth whatever harvest it is that you decide. The Bible tells us that there is a farmer who sows and a farmer who waters, but Lord, it is you that causes that seed to grow. So Lord, we ask that you will cause every seed sown to grow, not for our glory, but for your glory, not for our will, but for your will. In your precious Son and seed, Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
precious Lord, lead me home. Before I go into the prayer, I would like to also acknowledge that the flowers in the sanctuary are also in honor of another mama, Miss Clara Axum, whose 75th birthday she celebrates. Now I want to be clear, she's listening, that somebody gave me a note. And I didn't just say your birthday out loud, they gave it to me, so I did it because they requested it. <laughs> Not because of my own right, but God forgives, yes he does. <laughs> but this is a time in the service that you've got to be honest. You've got to be real. Because whether you say it or not, God can see it. And if we come to this church on Sundays and we're trying to get a victory, then you need to go and visit the victor. Okay? This that etiquette coming out. The victor. But in all, for real, if you feel like it, come on down to the altar. If you don't, sit still in your seats. If you're at home, Get out the bed, <laughs> recline your chair, do whatever you need to do to get comfortable. But prayer is just, it's just, it's just a conversation with God. Just yes, yes. a conversation with God. So don't be afraid to make a move for the first time. Your body will work. But I love you. Will, you come on down. <laughs> Y'all, this is my brother. For real, my brother, his children are my godchildren. This man is now going to acquire the old Greens candy store in the city school. I mean, not I said the city school, this is Cater. That's where I work. Don't pay no attention to that. In the city of the Cater. Yes, yes. But he needs your help and he needs your prayer. I don't know about y'all, but music makes the world go round. Amen. Amen. And the art of music, clarinet, bass clarinet, oboe, piano, all of that. These children need to have a creative outlet so that they can grow up to be adults and play their hearts out. And that's what he wants. And that's what God has laid on his heart. So either you want to invest by praying or giving some of your funds to him so that you can be a part of the partnership. Because we gotta have a place and a safe place and a place where God resides. Now, I don't know if y'all Prince fans or not, but I went over there the other day and I noticed on the side of the building, I'm going somewhere with that, that on the side of the building, if you take a picture of Paisley Park, and you take a picture of greens right now, where that place will be, it's the same picture with the same angle. And if you know anything about that creativeness that he had, it still lives. And maybe perhaps this is the place that it will reside. So I'm gonna stop there, but I had to say it because that's serious for me. I wanna see somebody be able to reap for joy and we be able to see and have a testament, a witness to the testament that God is still able. So let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, here we are again just talking to you. God, you know some of us didn't wanna get out of our beds this morning. Some of us were talking to ourselves and we, they were talking back. I'm just being honest. God, some of us are having aches and pains in our bodies. And some of us are discovering things that we didn't even know existed. But God, you are able to bring us to this place to keep us in our right mind. At least that's what we want to say. And help us to celebrate the gift of life. God, there are some people who are troubled in their spirits. Not because they are negative Nancy or doubting Donald, but because they are human beings who see the wickedness and the foolery in the world. But God, clean the slate, give us all fresh and blank canvases so that we may be able to create a masterpiece only from the master called God. 
God, I just ask that you would give us a victory today. That you would spread your love on each and every person in this place. Each and every person in this place. And an extension to other people that they engage in on a regular basis. And God, please help the United States. Please help the United States. What in the world is going on? We ask the question because we are inquiring and hoping and expecting an answer. God, you are in charge of our destiny. And so we seek your face for wisdom. But God, please touch those people in legislation, in the Senate, the state representatives, the people who are running for president. Lord, have mercy. But God, let us focus on the things that matter. How about prison policies how about fair and equality diversity and inclusion helping those find a home I'm not just talking about a physical home I'm talking about a spiritual and an emotional one a safe place to go God protect us from all guns and weapons and stuff remove them from the hands who don't know how to use it and I mean that for real. It is not the purpose to kill. It's the purpose to protect. But even still, God, in protecting, you tell us when. We don't. And so, God, I'm just asking that for people who are grieving. I mean, it's a process. It's every day. Sometimes we're grieving because we've lost ourselves. It's not always about another person. God, help us to find a place and a space to, to be, just to exist. But you know, God, let me say this. So we praying for a whole bunch of things and all of that stuff. How about let's just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. For everything that matters. The small things that are big. For food to eat. For clothes to wear, not name brand, but something to cover our bodies. For cars that work, that get us from A to Z. For places of employment. And God, if there's people that want to do something else because they know it's a burning desire, make room for it, Lord. Let them do it. But God, when we have had our cup overflow, help us to share it with somebody else. And stop holding on to it like it's, it's going to just be there forever. What? Just give it to somebody. Please, just feel comfortable enough to give it to somebody. And God, before I go away, there's an epidemic. There's people on every street light, street corner, etc. that are just standing there begging for money. I'm not going to put them down because I don't know what their circumstances are. But I ask that you would make a way for them too. So they won't have to keep standing on the same corner. Because I know even in the craziness, there's some form of purpose for them. They are your child. And for the other people in the world, I know Christ is such a loving person. He has made room and space for them. If we don't understand their capacity to love God, to help us. This is the day. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that we're going to turn it around in spite of ourselves. So let the melodies of the music just touch your heart. Let it pull you back together again. And let us be grateful for the people that surround us and care about us. And I think you might want to look in the mirror first and say, thank you, I love you. Because that's real. Ain't that much wrinkle in the world that's going to make me stop loving myself. I don't care. But God, you made that wrinkle, so thank you. God, teach our children to be who they are. And not to feel the pressure of trying to be who others want them to be. God, we love you. We believe in you and we believe in miracles and know that they are about to take place right now in this space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In your own corner, in your own space, 
call out what it is that you want. You don't have to say it out loud, but believe that God is going to grant it. Love, abundance, good health, well-being, a pace where purpose not only lives on the inside, but is expressed on the outside. And God, we will forever be grateful. It is in your mighty son's name, Jesus. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. Amen. First Church. Good morning, First Church. Awesome. I come to you this morning with two readings. The Old Testament, Deuteronomy 5, chapter 5, verse 12 through 15, and New Testament, Mark, chapter 3, 1 through 6. Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 15. Keep the Sabbath to sanctify it as the Lord thy God has commanded thee, six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. It is in thou it in it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine blankety blank, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. New Testament, third chapter of Mark 1 through 6, the Lord said, And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on that Sabbath day, that they may accuse him. And he said unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he said unto them, It is lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life or to kill. But they held their peace. And when he had looked around them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as the other. 
And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him and how they might destroy him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I've got so much to thank God for so many wonderful blessings. And so many open doors are brand new mercy. why I praise you and for this I give you praise for waking me up this morning praise you. for starting me on That's my way praise you. for letting me see the sunshine of a brand new day
I think somebody, I think God brought somebody over some mountains in this place. I love while that song says, for every mountain, because some of them aren't huge, some of them are small, but every mountain that we face, God has been there. Amen? Amen. Amen. I believe somebody want to give God some praise today. Amen. 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 I want to thank God, first of all, for the opportunity to stand. As you all see, I, I, I praise God that I can stand at all. And so I'm grateful for that. And then I praise God because I'm given the opportunity to stand in this spot. I thank our pastor, Reverend Andrews, for trusting me to stand in this spot. I always say that means I didn't say anything stupid the last time. <laughs> amen, amen, that we do give God thanks for him. Would you pray with me for a moment? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this worship experience. And God, right now at this moment, we sit and stand to hear a word from you. So God, I ask whether it be my ego or my fears, something physical or something emotional, that Kathy will not be a hindrance for the word that we all need to receive. This is my prayer today in the name of the Christ. Amen. 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 I want to talk for a little while from the topic outmaneuvered. Outmaneuvered. And in, 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 in order to take that journey, we have to do a little bit of time travel. We've landed in 1966 on a hot, humid day in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Our exact location is a playground that's next to an elementary school. The air is oppressively hot like it's been around here on and off for the past couple of weeks. But yet the children are outside playing for recess. It's so hot that most of the boys have unfastened their shirts to get relief from the heat. Meanwhile, the girls have no choice but to suffer and sweat under the polyester. But there's one little girl who begins to question the fairness of this situation. So she decides that it's unjust that the girls can't have equity with the boys. So she unbuttons her blouse. Not only does she unbutton her blouse, but she goes around the playground encouraging the other little girls to do the same. She said, join me in this act of liberation. Well, of course, it wasn't acceptable to the teachers and to the administration. So that little girl's parents were called and she was sent home from school. And I will never forget the, pe the beating and the talking to I got when I got home. <laughs> and to this day, I believe I was right. Because at six years old, we all look the same up top. And sometimes, my friends, you have to do wrong for a right cause. As John Lewis reminded us, sometimes we have to get into good trouble. Even at the risk of retribution, there are times that we need to stand for what we believe to be right, even if it defies the prevailing traditions. 
The author of Mark touches on this in our text for today. The text is a portion of a collection of five conflict stories recorded in Mark. One of the biblical interpreters that I read while I was preparing this message said, the stories that prob they probably circulated separately are now here clustered, perhaps as a kind of arsenal for the early church members who looked to Jesus for both precedent and pronouncement to enable them to handle their own conflicts. Don't we all need an arsenal to take with us? But that's what this was in this time. And of the five conflicts Jesus faced in this text, three of them involved blasphemy, which he was accused for eating with the wrong folk and not observing the fast. And two of the conflicts, including our text for today, were concerning the Sabbath regulations. In all these controversies, Jesus' actions or explanations came up against the prevailing religious and social traditions, especially the ones that involved the Sabbath. As we saw in the Deuteronomy text, the Sabbath laws were deeply embedded in Jewish culture, so much so that both Jew and Gentile knew these traditions. But sometimes traditions can get so embedded in us that we become unable to or refuse to see the why behind the what. In some cases, tradition becomes entrenched because it's just how it always has been. So that means it must be sanctioned by God to remain this way forever. As if the still speaking God has become mute. We forgot that God speaks to our hearts and to our minds within the realm of present day science and present day knowledge. God's not anchored in historical knowledge or traditions. One thing to always remember when we think about Jesus is that his mission in this world actually involved shaking up strongly held religious and social convictions of his time. Jesus was not uninformed of religious customs or Jewish law. He was a God-intoxicated man whose vision was beyond the tradition and what tradition dictated. He also knew something we need to remember. Just because someone says something is a law doesn't mean that it's always morally right. Jesus' focus was the realm of God where love and compassion makes room and often demands positive change. In the case of our text, the religious leaders were not God-intoxicated people. In many ways, they were fearful people who used religion and national tradition as a cover for their fear of change and loss of power. Some of us some of what we see today in circles who call themselves Christian and who use religion and even quote scripture, they use it to maintain an unjust status quo. Before we fall into promoting or supporting those views though, we first have to go back and understand how far back do you wanna to go to how it used to be? Whose rights and whose opportunities do they want to block or rescind in the name of God? Is it women's rights? Is it LGBTQ plus rights? Is it rights for people of color in general? Is it just rights for immigrants? Or is it rights for anything outside of a racist Christian nationalist worldview? In the scripture, we see that when the religious leaders got angry and they got fearful enough, they were willing to join alliances born out of overriding hatred. As one commentator put it, Pharisees in league with Herodians, religion and politics clutching the same sword. We don't have to read about these sort of alliances as old news or as myths. If we're paying attention, and we must be paying attention, we're watching it unfold in our time. In the book, The Universe Bends Towards Justice, Aubrey Hendricks highlights a chilling quote. He says, he quotes, 
the national government will maintain and defend the foundations on which the power of our nation rests. It will offer strong protection to Christianity as the very basis of our collective morality. Today, Christians stand at the head of our country. We want to fill our culture again with the Christian spirit. We want to burn out all the recent immoral developments in literature, in theater, in the press. In short, we want to burn out the poison of immorality which has entered into our world, our whole life and culture as a result of liberal excess during recent years. We might be sitting thinking, trying to think, who is that? Which one of the politicians are saying that kind of rhetoric these days? Well, my friends, it's none of them. That quote was a quote from Adolf Hitler. Perhaps, like the audience of the author's day, we can look to Jesus as our precedent of how to handle when we run up against these circumstances when religion and culture seem to block us from doing good to heal and to save lives. As I read and studied this text, a very familiar image came to mind, and I have no idea where this flew into my mind when I thought about this text. But it's a game where knowledge and wisdom are used to outmaneuver the opposition. I'm referring to the game of spades. In case there's someone listening who's not familiar with the game of spades, in the game there are two pair of players, and there's a full deck of cards, and it's dealt such that each person ends up with 13 cards. You don't um, let anybody see what's in your hand, but you take your cards and you arrange them according to the suits, the diamonds, clubs, hearts, and spades. The object of the game is to be able to capture a book by having the highest card in whatever suit is played first. That's a high-level basic view of the game. But the reason the game is called spades is because a spade can defeat any card in the book. For those of you who know how to play spades, I did say defeat. You may recognize that there's a word that I have replaced with defeat. I chose not to say that word, and I apologize to anybody who doesn't know that real word, but it starts with a capital T, and it's been in the news quite a lot lately. But as a person who loves truth, equality, justice, and democracy, I refuse to say that name. Amen. Somebody say amen. Say amen again. All right. The reason I think about spades in this text is because although the religious uh, leaders were playing their game of trying to trap Jesus for violating laws so they could eliminate him, Jesus always had a play that defeated everything else. He outmaneuvered the opposition with a love that lived out as compassion and justice. What I like about Jesus' love is that it was real love. It wasn't naive love. He recognized the playing field. The text even tells us he got angry at the Pharisees for their hardness of heart. But he didn't just get angry and do nothing. Because, you know, sometimes we're good for, I, I, I'm, I do it too, we're good for getting angry and just getting angry. Getting angry and giving up and saying, oh, well. But Jesus got angry and he used that anger um, to fuel him, to continue to do the dangerous countercultural love-infused work of the way of God. Love was Jesus' ace of spades to play no matter what anti-love opposition he played. If love said to heal, regardless of the day, for Jesus, wholeness superseded tradition. And if love said to include when tradition said to exclude, Jesus extended an extravagant welcome. He even won the hand finally played by the religious leaders and the government officials who conspired to have him executed. Because although they succeeded in executing Jesus, 
They did not know that wasn't Jesus' last play. Jesus still played a hand that outmaneuvered those who tried to thwart God's will. And that's evident by what we're doing here today. One final thing I want to share about spades is that the whole suit of spades, from ace all the way down to two, can make a difference. An opponent can be outmaneuvered with just a two of spades if you play your hand right. Similarly, we may not be Jesus, but if we're part of the same suit as Jesus, if we, like Jesus, know ourselves to be children of God, we must be committed to living out the countercultural love of God, making our contribution no matter how big or how small. We can be an ace or we can be a two. But we can have the the assurance that no matter what, love will win. Biblical scholar Aubrey Hendricks, again, I'll quote, he reminds us that Jesus' entire gospel is based on love. But note well that love is not, um, as it is used here, is not mere sentimentality. It is actively working to secure for one's neighbor what one wants for oneself. That's the difference between the politics of Jesus and the politics of politicians. Mm -hmm. And I'll add, and the religious leaders that are in league with them. Jesus' way acknowledges God as our divine parent meaning that all are holy. It's this standard that separates the politics of Jesus from the politics of politicians. Love, my friends, was Jesus' way to outmaneuver injustice. I'm glad today to know that God has dealt all of us into the game. We're here to play. Now we just need to play our hand to live out our love in in our places of employment, in our homes, in our communities, in our voting booth, and in our advocacy, no matter what the opposition does. Always keep in mind, as Jesus set the precedent, it's never the wrong time to do good. Recently, I was on a flight back from Philadelphia, and, and I'm closing. Um, and when we reached the beginning of the descent, you know they come along and they tell you you have to put away everything. I had been using my iPad. So when they said to put everything away, I put that away and I switched to using my phone. And um, I decided to use my phone to play a game of spades as we were descending into Atlanta. And the first hand I played on my my phone when I was playing spades, the first hand did not end up in my favor. It was bad. I ended up in negative numbers. But you know, I don't know if you have a spades app on your phone, but at the end of each hand, it asks you, do you want to continue? I was going to quit because it was just going bad, and nobody would know if I quit and gave up. But I decided I was going to keep going. And the next hand that was dealt, I actually had nine of the 13 spades in my hand. And the result of that hand brought me out of the negative numbers and put me way ahead of the game. And it reminded me of life and how we live our lives that we may face some disappointing losses. And some of it may be frightening. Some of it may be painful like the end result of my six-year-old stand for justice. But my friends, it's always, always too early to quit. We never know what the next hand is going to bring. So we must stay in the game, because even in our our present-day troubled social climate, we must follow the precedent set by Christ to outmaneuver hate every time, outmaneuver hate with righteous determination, believing that in the end love will win. It may not always look that way, my friends, but we have to believe that love will win. 
And we may not even see it in our lifetime, but we need to follow what Jesus did and at least set a precedent that somebody else will be able to follow so that love will continue. My friends, the long game is rigged in God's favor. And it's good to know, I love being a winner. And it's good to know I'm already a winner because I know I'm on the Lord's side. No matter what the situation, my friends, even if we lose a hand from time to time, our difficulties, all of your difficulties, will always be outmaneuvered by God's love. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's nothing better than knowing Jesus. He will pick you up and turn your life around. You ought to know Him. Get to know knowing Jesus He gets sweeter as the days go by You ought to know Him Get to know Him Right now Today just come. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Right now, today, just come. Come on, come on, come on. Just come. Y'all, we've had church today. <laughs> we have had church today. And I just need to do this right here. <laughs> that boy, y'all saw it. Yes, you did. That's where he said, spare the rod. Hit him. But don't quit. I am always so grateful for everybody that participates in service. Everybody, the deacons, diaconate, Rev. You always teach me a little something now. I'm just so, just, and I'm grateful that God made you able to do it. That's important, you know, because sometimes we get discouraged based on our own circumstances that we might think that we can't do it and won't attempt, but you did, and God blessed us all through it. Trey, thank you for the happy birthday song early. I appreciate that. Spontaneity. The voices. The videographers. The people working the cameras. The ushers. Michelle, who wasn't supposed to be here today, but you showed up because you knew we needed you. Everybody. 
But like I always say, the doors of the church are always open. They are always open. Nobody has to say it out loud. They open, wide open. And so if you feel compelled or led to do, walk down and just say yes, then feel free to do so. But if you feel like just sitting in the pews and recommitting yourselves to God, do that too. Every day is a new beginning and a new opportunity to say yes. So everybody say yes. yes. And so I thank you for that. But now as we move into the service of communion, I'm about to do something unorthodox. I don't want to hear it later on. I don't need anybody sending any emails, calling anybody on the phone. I just want you to pay attention to this and how simple and easy things can be. So all the children, come in. So Jesus Christ invites everybody to the table. And I'm willing to guess that all of them are not old enough just yet and haven't been a part of communion or um, confirmation class where they affirm that they are a part of the church. But if you remember, there was a little boy during the time of the feeding of the 5,000. And he was the one who had the bread and the fish. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't ever exclude the youth and the children in the church at any time. And that's not to suggest that we do. But I like to surround them around me because one, it keeps me young. And then it also informs them that they always have a place at the table. Yes, yes. And so that's what the invitation really means. And so a lot of times, we say, don't touch this, don't do this. If this napkin is not a certain way or if this cup is not filled to the tea, then we feel like maybe something is missing and there's a gap. But Jesus Christ is the gap filler. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is the one that invites everybody to the table in any condition that you're in. And so I'm going to bless all of you get into the mic, microphone checker, mic microphone checker. So let's go on with the service of Holy Communion. Luke the evangelist wrote of our risen Lord that when he was at table with two of the disciples, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. In company with all believers, in every time and beyond time, we come to the table to know him in the breaking of the bread. For the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. It is good that we do. We give you thanks, Lord God, our Creator, for bringing the worlds into being, for forming us in your likeness, for recalling us when we rebelled against you, and for keeping the world in your steadfast love. We praise you especially for Jesus Christ, who was born of Mary and lived as one of us, who knew exactly the life we know, and yet was obedient to your purposes, even to his death on a cross. We thank you that you stamped his death with victory by raising him in power and by making him head over all things. We rejoice in the continuing presence of the Holy Spirit in the church we have gathered in its task of obedience and in the promise of eternal life. With the faithful in every place and time, we praise with joy your holy name. Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God, most high. Therefore, bless now by your word and spirit, both us and these gifts of bread and wine, that in receiving them, at this table and in the offering here our faith and praise, we may be united with Christ and one another and remain faithful to the task he sets before us. In the strength Christ gives, we offer ourselves to you, giving thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Beloved, This is the bread of life that was broken for you so that you may live freely and not in captivity. Eat this in remembrance of him. This is the cup, the symbolic meaning of the blood that was shed for us. It was real. That occasion was real. And so drink in remembrance him. And thanks be to God for him, for he still lives. Let us pray. Jesus, 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 our brother Jesus, we acknowledge you not as just a sim symbol, but as a real being. One who was human, yet divine. God, help us to remember you, but have joy in our hearts, in our living. And God, help us to connect and stay connected to the vine. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. It's now time to prepare for the benediction. This has been a wonderful time, I believe. And I'm grateful again for all of you. And it's good to see you. You've been missed. And I know you've been working and doing stuff in the tour, but I'm glad to see you. That's important. And Ed Simon, you are back in the building. Amen. Ed Simon is back in the building after recovering. And we're grateful for you. And we expect to see you back to work soon, sir. Just, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. But don't let anybody take away anything that makes you happy and brings you joy. Don't talk about people because it doesn't do anything but make things toxic. Pray to God for the things that you want and believe and trust that he's going to give it to you because he wants you to have it. But always remember that if you stay connected to the vine, that you'll be able to fulfill whatever purpose that he gives you at any moment. And I'm standing here. I was born and raised in this church. I have served back and forth for 25 years, and he still has purpose for me. And I may not be where I exactly want to be finished, because I'm not finished yet. 
but God is still speaking. He is still able. And I'm grateful to be able to be here to support Pastor Andrews in his absence and here to support definitely Reverend Dr. Kathy. I appreciate you. Amen. And I also want to lift up our interns. They're doing a wonderful job. Amen. 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 So may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit that resides in all of us. Rest, rule, and abide. And you take your light out into the world and make it happen. Because he is the captain. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Be gracious.